know, the great thing about Suffolk Open Studios is that you meet fabulous people. That's a simple truth. They brave the sun, they brave the showers, and they come here. So for all these years, uh, from 16, at school, last time I painted. All those years went by, and in 2006, something like January the 6th at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, got myself some wallpaper lining paper, emulsions, acrylics, some paintbrushes, and then decided, after the many years I had spent actually studying art history, and as I now tell the tale, dead artists, it was what I learned from those artists that made me feel it's my turn to do some painting. What I do, or what I did really quite early on, was to again play with the paint, see what it does, compose it as best as I felt necessary within the confines and the, and the parameters that set on the edge of the canvas. And when we're happy, and I mean this really, when we're happy, we stand back at each of those little stages and look at it and think, no, it needs a little bit of a move here or a tweak there. There will be a point whereby that's it. Uh, it's a conscious aim not to be restricted by the boundaries of the, of the frame. Uh, and again, through academic study, it became quite clear to me that when I was going to paint, I didn't want to have those restrictions. So I include the border, the margin within inside the, the parameters and the perimeter of, of the, uh, the piece that I'm working on. So I can actually leech on, leech out. And, and create a visual extension really of, of what actually the canvas or the board or the piece that I'm working on allows more so than it did before. <laughs> I know exactly what I know exactly what I'm doing until you perhaps look at some of these and go, ah, oh, I don't think he knew what he was playing at at all. You do know what you want to do. You do know when there's realism involved in it and construction and composition as an artist. This is me now, of course, as opposed to any other artist. I know what it is, generally speaking, I want on that, on that field. How I apply it, whether I use natural colour, non-natural colour, that's my choice. I love non-natural colour, just because I do. It's also an experiment in how I actually apply it so when you stand away from it you go that's the moon that's the earth so it's an element of realism in it but made very simple if I can and the big eight uh, big six foot one that you saw before the nice thing about that is there I am floating in space with my artist palette on my forearm and my paintbrush in my hand with my and I am floating in space with my um, e uh, canvas on my knee looking over the horizon of the earth and this sunrise so that's the ultimate sunrise painting that you do hovering there in space. So what I really want to do is, is take now the next step. So I'll paint as I've always done, but I'll paint on three dimensional surfaces, all the ones that I choose to paint on. So this is a guitar that was given to me. I've stripped it off of its uh, strings and what have you. But again, I'll paint this in Dick Woolsey style around the back, around the front, yet to determine exactly what it might be, but actually what also will happen is uh, this mouse and maybe his friend as well will feature on the guitar and in the guitars again to make it more of an art piece small paintings are fun to do but the bigger they are the more fun they are to do the great thing is Suffolk Open Studios still exists and so it should because without us putting our shows at our galleries in our homes people will never have an idea of what we do and they should and the reason they should is that we're there to inspire them, to take them from our gardens, to go home, to do exactly what it is we're doing, and do it with a passion. The abstract, it's fun with paint. Why, you can't get any better than that, trust me.